<laughs> this is gonna be fun. I love my PC. Like, I really love it. And one of the reasons I love it is the two NVIDIA RTX 2080 Supers that allow me to really use DaVinci Resolve to its full potential. But now NVIDIA has come out with the GeForce RTX 4080, which promises to do more faster with just a single GPU. So. Let's put it to the test. Before we get started, just a quick bit of disclosure. This video is not sponsored by NVIDIA. However, they did send me the RTX 4080 Founders Edition for the purposes of this review. No money exchanged hands though, and they don't get any say in what I say in this review. They did get to see this video before it was released, but that was just to make sure that I didn't include any technical misinformation. And with all of that out of the way, let's get started. The RTX 4080 has a few things that really give it an edge, specifically in the video production space and even more specifically for DaVinci Resolve. For one, it has dual 8th gen NVIDIA encoders, allowing me to take advantage of DaVinci Resolve's dual encoding capabilities without having to use an additional GPU. Plus, the RTX 4080 allows for AV1 encoding for DaVinci Resolve. Now, I'm not going to go too deep into what AV1 is, but the short version is that it's a newer open source source codec that allows for higher quality in smaller file sizes. People are claiming it's going to replace H.264 and H.265. YouTube already supports it since Google is the one who originally developed it. Uh, it's all very exciting stuff. I don't know exactly when the update will come to Resolve that allows you to export AV1, but I have a pre-release version of the build so I could do this review. So. I'd imagine it's coming soon. AV1 is also available for streaming through Discord, OBS, and Twitch with the 4082, though I'm not 100% sure about when that will be officially available on the various platforms. And on top of all that, the RTX 4080 claims to be two times faster than the 3080 Ti while using less power. Now, before I did the test on the RTX 4080, I wanted to get a baseline to see how well or poorly this new GPU would stand up against the two 2080 Supers already installed in my system. Luckily, NVIDIA was nice enough to send me a test project that contained both a 4K 30 frames per second timeline and an 8K 30 frames per second timeline. The 4K timeline played back smoothly at a constant 30 frames per second at full timeline resolution and exported a two minute and six second long H.265 file in 52 seconds. It's not bad at all. Unfortunately, the 2080 GPUs struggled a bit with the 8K file playing back at an inconsistent frame rate at full timeline resolution and exporting in three minutes and 11 seconds. And now that we had our baseline, it was time to swap out the GPU. Uh, now, I've, I've never done this before. I've never actually replaced a GPU. So um, this is gonna be a bit of a learning experience. Uh, Wish me luck. Swapping out the GPU is fairly straightforward, but not necessarily easy. For one thing, the 4080 is massive, and I ended up having to remove some of the pretty plexiglass spacers from my case in order to get it to fit. Also, I've got short little stubby fingers, and not the best for working in small spaces. It's Kind of amazing how I lasted 15 years as an electrician. But for the most part, like I said, installing the GPU was pretty simple. That is, until I ran into a slight hiccup. We've run into a bit of an issue. Uh, let me, let me show you. So the 4080 has this new cable adapter and it requires three dedicated eight pin PCIe cables, which I don't have. I have this, which has some jumpers, but it only ends up being two cables in the end. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's unfortunate. So I guess for now I'm without a computer and, uh, and I'm stuck. 
I guess we'll pick this up tomorrow. Basically what happened was this, the RTX 40 series GPUs that are out now, so the 4090 and 4080 have a new type of PCI cable adapter, but in order to get it to work, you need three eight pin male to male PCIe cables to run from that adapter to your power supply. Not a huge deal, except when nobody local has any available. So you find them on Amazon and the listing says they could be delivered overnight. So you order them and you check the order status an hour later and it says it'll be delivered on Friday before 10 p.m. So now you're just hoping they get there before the kids get home from school because you're now running out of time to get the video out on embargo day. And <sighs> needless to say, I was a little worried. But as promised, the PCI cables were delivered on Friday and I was able to get them in. And after all was said and done, the PC booted up and nothing exploded. So it all worked out in the end. But if you do decide to pick up a 40 series GPU, just make sure to have all those PCI cables on hand just in case you need them. I'll have the ones that I purchased linked below. From there, I went into DaVinci Resolve and in the deliver page, I verified that the AV1 codec was available, which was awesome. And then I got to testing. Just like with the dual 2080 setup, the 4K timeline played back smoothly at 30 frames per second. No surprise there. What absolutely blew me away though, was the export times. That same two minute and six second timeline exported in 18 seconds with the new 4080 GPU, which is a full 34 seconds faster than with the two 2080s. And with the RTX 4080 installed, the 8K timeline was able to play back smoothly as well. And it exported a 4K H.265 file in one minute and three seconds, which is two minutes and eight seconds faster than with the 2080s installed. I also tested out the AV1 exports and just like with the H.265 files, they were super fast with the 4K file exporting in 19 seconds and the 8K file exporting in one minute and five seconds. And keep in mind, this was all with a screen recorder running. So yeah, this thing's kind of amazing. Now, this was all in a controlled environment. What I wanted to know was how well would this GPU perform in a real world situation? So I created a new timeline, brought in some 6K 12-bit B-RAW and started cutting away. I added a few fusion titles, did some compositing in the fusion page and did some color grading complete with noise reduction. And everything went amazing. I mean, sure, DaVinci had some issues with the fusion titles, but that's nothing new. That playback has always been weird. What amazed me was the fact that I was able to composite and do some pretty intensive grading with a dual screen setup without getting the dreaded GPU full error, which tended to happen with the 2080s from time to time. That's why I ended up going back down to a single monitor setup. Happy to announce that is no longer the case. So to sum it all up, the RTX 4080 is a powerhouse and definitely gives you the ability to do more with less. It's definitely faster than the dual 2080 setup I had been using and it's apparently twice as fast as the 3080 Ti while using less power and costing around the same amount of money. Plus it unlocks the ability to export the AV1 codec in DaVinci Resolve and to stream in AV1 on Discord OBS and Twitch. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, this thing is a no brainer for anyone who does any kind of graphics intensive work, works in video production or does high end streaming. The RTX 4080 comes in 16 gigabyte versions and the pricing starts at $1199. All of the information on how to get your hands on one will be linked below along with more information about the gaming improvements of the RTX 4080. Speaking of gaming, did you know that using a gaming laptop for video editing is isn't always the best idea. To find out why, check out this video right here. And until next time, don't forget to go out and make stuff. Thanks for watching. I'm on a stool now, so I can do the, I can spin. It's hard to control though. It's, I can't, I can't, I, I just, I can't. Ow.